Hello, it's Rebecca here from Precious Pages Papercraft and today I'm designing a layout for Bramble Fox and I'm using a couple of the sets from the store from the winter release this year. So I've got the festive words and festive jumper set, both in lovely traditional Christmas colours. I love red and green for Christmas um, and they were perfect for this photo I've got of my little boy. Um, we were doing an at home photo shoot and he's got his knitted jumper on and it's got a reindeer on the front and the reindeer's nose is kind of like a big bobble um, and he's pulling it up to his nose and bumping it on his own nose, just messing around. And I managed to get a photo of him doing that. So I'm going to use that today. Um, and I'm going to pull out the words sweater and jumper. And then I've got a red and green jumper so that um, I've got two of each colour. I was in the mood to have a play with a cut file today. It's been a while since I've used a cut file. And I've got this lovely circular starburst design. It's from a store on Etsy called Scraps for Days Designs. Um, it's a lady called Vicky. Um, I'll pop a link in the description box below to her Etsy store. She's got some lovely files. But I really loved the starburst sections in this one. And I've pulled out Simple Stories Make It Merry collection. It's one of the Christmas collections from this year. And again, I love the traditional reds and greens in this. And I've got some darker shades in my photo as well. So I'm going to use a couple of the pattern papers that have got darker elements. Um, this one, for example, is like a black paper with green holly leaves on. Um, so I'm going to draw in a few darker shades as well. Now, originally I'd planned to use the sort of off-cut bits of the cut file, draw around them and then cut them out slightly bigger so that I could back the cut file with them. But I just felt like that was a little bit plain and I wanted to do something just slightly different. Um, so instead, I'm cutting them out true to size, then I'm going to distress all the edges of these um, kind of Saba segments. And then I'm going to return them to the cut file, but I'm going to stick the cut file down flat and then raise these segments up on foam just to bring in a bit of dimension, um, just a little bit more interesting than backing a cut file and sticking it down flat. So it just allows me to distress the edges and just bring in a bit more texture to my page. And I love how it ends up turning out. So as you can see here, I've just alternated, I think four or five different pattern papers from the collection. Um, I'm just gonna get this cut file stuck down flat now, and then I'm gonna replace all of those pieces up on foam. So with the wonderful magic of editing, I've skipped through the rest of that for you as it was a bit repetitive, um, but I love how that is looking with that starburst design. And I'm going to get my photo stuck in place now because I know that that is going to sit on that circular part of the cut file. It was almost made for a nice circular photo to sit on there. So I've printed my photo, I think it's about three and a half inches across, um, and I'm just sticking it to some white cardstock and cutting it back out, leaving a white border. Um, and this just serves to kind of make the photo a bit more rigid because photo paper is quite thin and I didn't want it to kind of sink around the middle or anything. Um, and also by leaving that white border around the edge just offers my photo a bit of separation from the busy papers in the background and um, just helps it to pop that little bit. And then I decided to add another layer of patterned paper behind it. And I've used a different one to um, the Starburst design, again, just to help it pop with that separation, just a different pattern and different colors. And I've also added some foam in the middle there that my photo is gonna sit on. Because those Starburst segments have foam behind them, I need my photo to sit level so that it's not kind of sinking down in the middle where that um, open circle is. And then I've got that stuck in place with some double-sided tape. So you can see how I'm arranging my perspectives on this layout. I'm gonna have the red word and the green jumper to the top, and then the green word and red jumper down to the bottom. And I'm pulling in the word Christmas from the foam sticker sheet, so my title becomes Christmas Sweater. Um, and again, that's in black, so it just draws a little bit more from the darker shades in my photo. 
And then I'm just going to go through the die cut pack or the bits and pieces pack and the combo stickers sheet and just see what I've got that I can add. I don't want to go too mad on the embellishments because those pattern papers are quite busy. So I, I want to use a few bits, but I don't want anything that's going to get lost. So I've pulled out um, a couple of like armchairs, one red and one green. Our little photo shoot in the photo is done at home. It's just something I do with my little boy every year. Um, we don't bother about a photographer and a studio and all of that. I've got a backdrop and some props at home. Um, so I like the little armchairs because it just reminded me of like being at home and cosy, um, which it obviously was when we did this photo shoot. So they work really nicely for me got a little Santa head going there above my title as well and I've stuck my perspectives down today using glossy accents but I've left that protective film on the backing so if you're um, new to Bramble Fox products when you receive your perspectives they will have a protective film sometimes front and back um, sometimes only on the back especially if it's an etched design um, ideally you should peel that off and then it sometimes makes the perspectives like a bit shinier um, for this layout, I've left them on purely because um, I felt like the pattern papers were showing through the perspective otherwise. So by leaving that protective film on the back, it's kind of allowed the truer colour of the perspectives to show through rather than having a bit of busy pattern papers underneath and them getting a bit lost. And I'm just going to finish this layer off with a border of Nuvo drops around the outside edge of my cut file. And I had a little bit of trouble with them to start with. My craft room gets really cold, so they'd all kind of, not frozen, but where they were so cold they weren't working at all. So I had to sit them in a mug of hot water for a few minutes and poke a pin down the nozzle, leave them upside down. Um, but after a few minutes I got them working, so uh, not a total loss, but it did take a little while to get them going. And I'm just alternating between red, green and black and I'm going to go around the whole outside edge um, and I love doing this. I find it really therapeutic and I just love the way it looks. Um, almost like enamel dots but not quite so perfect because I'm not that good with them. Um, but yeah, I just love the way that Nouveau drops look when you make a border or a frame around things. So I'm just going to take some time to go the whole way around the page um, and finish that off. So I think I'm pretty much there with my new fray drops now. That is my finished layout. So I hope you've enjoyed this process and it's given you some inspiration. Absolutely love these perspectives and I've got a couple of the jumpers left, which is just as well because my son's got three Christmas jumpers from this year. So I've got loads of photos of him to scrap in them. But I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll leave some links in the description box below to the products I've used, to Vicky's Etsy store for that cart file, and also to the Bramble Fox Friends Facebook group if you're not already a member. Do pop over and join us. You'll get loads of inspiration and obviously our monthly challenge as well. Um, but thanks again for joining me. I'll leave you with the rest of the close-ups and I'll see you next time.